Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over UFC 303, um, and we're going to dedicate this completely to lineup construction. Most specifically, how to win that 100,000 or 200,000, whatever it is up top, in that big MME contest. And this is probably my favorite bit of content, my favorite, my, probably my favorite video to do, because it really illustrates the difference between identifying what the good plays are and who you're really supposed to play. Um, when you're trying to win these big GPPs. And it's it's a very important distinction. We did a video Thursday where we went over who, you know all the good plays, but that information is going to be used by everybody. I mean, quite honestly, everybody's got access to decent projections. Um, you are going to find some, you know, plays that are kind of over-owned or over-projected, but very, very rarely – and you have to decide what you want to do. In other words, you're trying to beat, you know, 17, you know, was it 19,000 people or something like that? And you're trying to, to win the tournament in a way that when you do get lucky and hit all, you know, the optimal lineup, you don't want to be sharing it with 40 people either. So you have to kind of run this, you know, this, this balance between trying to find lineups that have a shot and lineups that when they do come in, they they cash for for a ton, right? And that's that really is the the essence of DFS. And we have access to these really incredible tools, like different sim products that you can use um, to screw around with the best plays, screw around with the lineup constructions to get what you want, you know. Um, and the thing you have to really, I think, embrace the idea of you know, building these lineups for the 150 is to kind of dispense with the idea of, of who you want. Okay. And who you'd like to get. And, and this is, this is actually some really important theory about how you deal with Saber Sim in general is that do you use it to get as a tool to help get what you want? Or I feel like I'm, I'm quoting the Rolling Stones here, or do you use it to help you get what you need? You know, um, it's an important difference. You know, if you go into the Sabersim world expecting certain types of lineups, you're going to naturally tell it to do what's necessary to get you those lineups. Where if you let it do its thing and you you mess with the inputs somewhat and just kind of roll with what you get, I, I, I tend to argue that that might actually be better. OK, because you're removing your own biases from the equation. and um, um, that's why when we finish these videos, I very rarely even show what we have, you know, it, it's because it doesn't really matter. You know, as long as you go through the process, right, you're, you're doing well. First thing I did was I uploaded, you know, all my projections. Again, these will change, but just again, show you process uh, to Sabre Sim. And I ran my first 5,000 lineups. And all this comes down to really is how you want to to rank them you know which which 150 do you want to use before we get into the various ranking systems um let's see what the overall pool looks like and i, I do this for a reason now again this is the 5,000 lineup breakdown and what i like to do is i want to see if this ownership kind of represents my projected ownership you know um and if it does what I'll end up doing is using this pool as my field to compare my my uh, my lineups to when I run the sims. Because um, you have a choice of whether to compare, of what type of field to compare your lineups to. You can create your own custom field. You can use the Sabre Sim default fields, whatever. But what I like to do is, you know, if I run a full set of 5,000 lineups, um, as long as the ownership sort of matches what I expect, then I'm going to go with this. And it does. Okay, now forget what exposure is. That's that means how you're rating the top 50, depending on how you want to sort these. But I'm looking at the overall pool. These ownership projections look about right. Okay. Um, so that's the first thing. Um, and when we do the sims, we will we will we will show how that kind of works out. As a matter of fact, let's let's okay, we're going a little out of order here, but let's um Let's get the Sims going first.
And again, we're going to save our lineups. And then what we're going to do is with, within this one knockout special, we'll right click, we'll add contests in. And instead of using the, the field lineups flagship MME, which is the default for Saberson, we are going to use build one here. Okay. And we'll hit save. And I guess while we're here, we'll, we'll do this for all of them. Okay. Now we have contest sim. Go one. Save settings. Triangle. Add contest sims. Build one. Contender. Add contest sims. And again, this is not exactly accurate because maybe the ownerships are going to be different for the for these other contests. Keep this here. And good. So so we'll run the contest sims now. Just so that we've so we have something to refer to. And again, all this this is exercise is it boils down to this. I promise you that of the 150 lineups that I'm going to enter, they're going to come from this 5,000, okay? The only question is which ones and how to rank them, okay? So let's go over different ways to rank these lineups and how to figure out which to choose from, all right? So, again, we're trying to draw that, that combination of lineups that have a shot and lineups that are going to pay a lot when they come in, all right? So let's first take a look at, um, I don't know, the, the sim lineups, right? Let's look at the ones where we used uh, our own um, our own pool and we're running it against it, and, and this is what it would look like. Um, the, the thing about this one is that it really doesn't do a great job with dupes, okay? So if, if you were going to give me a set of lineups that – I think are most likely to hit the optimal. I would say this combination, like using the projections, running the Sims, and then kind of throwing, you know, and then running it against your pool here. Um, and then what you could do, again, this is a very conservative approach, is you could then make, you know, more min uniques, which, you know, gives you a few more combinations. Well, how many of these can you make? No, you can't even do more than this. So you probably do min uniques too. And if you did that, you threw these lineups in, you'd probably, you know, you'd be in good shape, okay? Do you have a shot to win, like, the whole kahuna? The big kahuna? Probably not, though. And this is one error, error, uh, one one issue with the sim products. Uh, they don't do the greatest job with dupes. They just don't. Um, so how do we change this? How do we get stuff that's got a shot to win the whole thing? Well, Let's first go to our 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 old friend, this MMA default setting. Okay, okay. Let's not let's not look at the exposures yet. So the MMA default setting for those of you that are here for the first time is by far the most aggressive way to rate these lineups. Okay, um, I don't even want to show you what who you, how much you'd be getting of all these fighters because trust me, you wouldn't like it. But just to kind of show you what this is all about, you click on the eyeball with MMA default, and it'll give you the formula of how these are created. And the key number that you're looking at here is the fact that not only do they ding it, ding the lineups for the sum of adjusted ownership, but also they're counting on the 99th percentile of the lineup, okay, which is pretty ambitious to say the least. So that's why you end up getting all kinds of like crazy lineups here. So what I did, and what you guys can do if you want, is create your own kind of uh, derivative of that. And, and maybe not have the 99th percentile lineup, but have, like what I did with Sheets Default, I created my own metric here. And instead of dinging it or only requiring the 99th percentile, I'm requiring the 95th percentiles of labs. And that's that's plenty aggressive, okay, to say the least, okay? Um, so... What I always have to consider is how many of my 150 or am I going to go with these ultra super high aggressive lineups? Okay. I always do at least 50. Sometimes it's worth even doing more. Okay. So let's first we'll sort these by sheets default. And now the question is 
um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to play 50. But my question is, do I then need to still do min uniques more than one? Okay. Uh, I don't think it matters one way or the other too much. Um, but let's, let's, let's do that. Let's go min uniques too. And what we'll do is we'll just save these. All right. These are going to be my 50 sheets default. Just what the hell are you doing sheets? You have no chance to win type lineups. Okay. But you just have to trust me. Um, these um these lineups have teeth. Okay, they they don't they don't win a lot, but when they do, they really put you in a position to win a ton. Okay. The next bunch that I want to think about are the bunch that are kind of forcing in low ownership. Okay, and what that does is that. You know, it it, it it does geo mean filtering and literally says I'm not playing lineups with ownerships of less than this, of more than this. And I don't really like doing that for MMA because what happens is is you end up just getting way too much of just literally the lowest owned fighter. You don't get like kind of like cool combinations of lower of you know of lower owned combinations, but you do get just like an overwhelming number of 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 uh, an overwhelming amount of the lowest owned fighter, which I don't necessarily want. I much prefer using like something like the sheet default or MMA default settings to get my my kookiness exposure because at least that's that's projecting. It's projection based. In other words, it's it's based on the upside given your projections. Where just saying I want something low owned doesn't really help me all that much. So I've been slowly getting away from straight geo mean stuff within, uh, within MMA. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is the other way to, to get a little bit unique. Um, and that would be leaving salary on the table. Uh, on, on a card like this, it's particularly suited to it for this reason. The, the, the salaries you want to leave money on the table are typically the underdogs who's who are really really good plays, okay? But just are really popular, okay? And you want to find those underdogs that look good, but you're afraid of low ownership, of high ownership, and then make sure that the opponent has a higher median projection than the underdog. Okay? It's usually the case, but sometimes not. So you may have to double check that. And the reason for that is that we want to kind of F with the optimizers that are out there. Okay. We want to, we want to force people's hands to play the favorite against these kind of good looking, but chalky underdogs. So what we do is we, is we, we, we tempt them, you know, we, we take a fighter that's, that's, that's an underdog and we leave just enough money on the table to, to have the optimizers want to snarf up the favorite, okay? So this way, you're still getting a good high upside play from the underdog, you know, which you like anyway. But the lineups with that underdog in it are going to be much, uh, much lower owned because most people, when you leave that money on the table, are going to be getting to the favorite just because that's the way the optimizers work. Um so the two fights that are particularly suited to this are the Macy Chesson fight and the uh well that's the main one and and the Prohaska fight. Okay, because these are the those are probably the two most popular underdogs, Macy Chesson and uh and Yuri Prohaska, most specifically Yuri Prohaska. Um let's just take a look at these on these. Ownerships, yeah, I'm getting Yuri at 38 percent and Chiasan almost 40 percent. Uh, so these are the fighters that we have to worry about uh, rostering because they're going to be low owned. So let's see what these relative prices are. So Prohaska 7700, Pahea is 8500. So what we want to do is we want to play Prohaska lineups that leave 800 on the table. And in addition to that, we want to play um, Chasson lineups that leave, well, Chasson is against Mara Buena Silva, who is, what's her price? She's 88. 
So we, and we want only fourteen hundred on the table with Macy Chesson. Um, so that that's obviously very um, that's very uh, that's very dangerous to leave that much on the table. But when you want to get unique, I think it's um, I think it's not bad. The other thing you could do if you didn't want to get too aggressive is you could play Chasson and leave only three hundred on the table. So what what, is, what does that do for you? Okay. What that does is it makes people get to Prohaska. Okay, because Prohaska is a really obviously a really well meant underdog here. So if you have, you know, you don't have either of these guys in, Prohaska or Chasan, and there's 7,700 left, you're they're almost they're gonna take Prohaska all the time. So you could play Chasan and leave 300 on the table. Okay. Um uh, excuse, so I, I don't know how aggressive you want to be with that. I think some of both make sense. Um, but if we do that, we have to figure out where we're, we're pulling them from as well. Like, do you have to play from the sheets default section? Like, probably not. You know, if, you, if you're you going to leave 1,200 on the table, something like that. So it's a question of how much you're leaving on the table. So if I'm going to play – Chasson and leave 1400 on the table. I don't care about, about ranking these by ownership or anything like that at that point, you know, or even by upside. I just want the top projecting lineups, you know, if I'm going to go ahead and bother leaving 1400 on the table. And same thing with the, with the, with the, uh, Prohoshka. I'm going to leave 800 on the table. That's a lot to leave. I'm probably not going to care too much about, about what, about, you know, how to rank them. But when you're going to play Chasson and only leave 300 on the table, then I still think that you want to only get those lineups that are within this either, you know, the sheets default type setting. So, so how do we do this? Let's first, um, okay. So we're going to have to, we could make a whole new build, but instead let's cheat. Let's see if there are any Prohaska lineups like pre-built that leave, um, any Prohaska lines that are pre-built that leave seven or whatever, 700 on the table? Is that what it is? No, 800 on the table. So let's, let, let's take out the min uniques. Let's go to uh, add filter. And we'll go salary less than 49,300, right? Because that'll leave 800 on the table. Okay. Let's see how many we get here. Do we have any? Yeah, we do. We can get 50. We can get a full 50 lineups. With Prohaska locked in, leaving that much on the table. Now, we don't need them, right? So first of all, we don't need to rate them by sheets defaults. We can rate them by just the straight, you know, straight sims if we want. Okay, that makes a little more sense. But do we need 50? You know, pro probably not, right? Um, we don't know how many we need, but we're going to have to do it for for both of these guys. We're going to have to do a Prohaska, and we're probably going to have to do two of them for um for Chasson, and I, we could be even duping the lineups that we've already made. So let's just start by making 30, I guess. So 30 Oshka lineups that leave 700 on the table, okay? So let's um, save those. Okay. And then let's go back to uh, let's get uh, let's unfilter these. Let's unlock Prohaska, and now let's lock in Chason. I wonder if there are even any Chason lineups that leave fourteen hundred on the table. Uh, I doubt it, but let's just let's let's just see. And and if that's the case, maybe we should. We, maybe we should learn from that. Um, salary less than, so that would be 48,700, right? Less than 48,700. Let's see. I don't know. Yeah, look at this. We can get 30. Um, so 30 lineups with Chisan, but leaving all that on the table. Okay, so let's. But we also are going to want to get some with 300 on the table. So should we go 15-15? Should we go 20-20? Let's go 15-15. We'll 
We'll go 15 lineups with Chisson that leave 1,400 on the table. Save these. Okay. And then what we'll do, and this will be fun, we will add this new filter and we'll you still use Chisson, Chisson, Macy Chisson. And now we're only going to leave 300 on the table, less than 49,800. But then when it's not good enough, you know, to just rate them by Sims. Now we have to rate them by, by sheets defaults. Right. Sheets defaults. Right. We'll save these. So now we got like a bunch, a bunch of lineups right now. We have 50 from the uh 50 from sheets defaults, and we have 30 plus 30, and that's 60 leaving money on the table so we have 110 lineups okay so far we it could be that they end up being duped meaning that it's possible that lineups that i you know that show up in both in many multiple screens so um i'm gonna have to filter that out and i'll show you how to do that in a minute so what else can we do if we want to play 40 lineups well we could if we wanted to be wimps you know, we could just, you know, put 40 of our regular SIM-based lineups in, okay, if we want. Um, the other thing you could do is you could you could build up some lineups with, like, stuff you like, okay? Like, for example, I mean, I talked about in my video that there were three fights that I kind of wanted to consider locking in, right? And those fights were the... Um, were the uh, Simone uh, Oliveira fight, the Chiasan Buena Silva fight, and the Lopes uh, Ortega fight. So what I did was I ran a whole nother bunch of builds, another build where I did that. I, I made sure to pay 100% of those fights, okay? I wanted someone from all three of those fights. And I set a minimum, you know, a maximum, make sure that, like, I wasn't getting all of one fighter. And... That is at least me like kind of like leveraging what I like. All right. Now, again, that's not exactly what you're looking to do with Sabersim, but, you know, it's it's not bad either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those last 40 lineups from this pool, from the ones that had a minimum of one of these guys in them. And so the only question is, is how do I want to rate them, you know? Is it good enough to to rate them just by the sims? Or are they going to be way too? Are they going to be way too popular? You know, for example, you know, um, let's just see what this looks like. Um, like this one. See, I made a mistake of looking to see what these this would give me. Okay. Um, if I went to straight, you know, uh, where is the? Uh, actually, I didn't do it, but I didn't run the sims for this one. Let's say I even went like straight sim diversity here, where I just like. I basically did the best plays, you know, but I made sure to lock all those guys in. I mean, some of these are, I think, are a little, just a little bit too chalky for me. So what you could do is you could leave a little money on the table with these. And I think that 300 was kind of a neat little place to start. So what are we doing? We're stacking the guys we like. We're running this. We're just using Sim Diversity 10, which isn't bad, um, but it isn't great. Okay, and let's uh, build, I don't know, let's just go 20 from Sim Diversity 10 regular. Okay, so let's download those. Boom. And then we'll also go within here, we'll go 20 with a salary restraint. Not a big deal. Well, let's do 400. Not less than 400. Oops. That's pretty funny. I meant 49,000. Less than 49,500. Okay. We'll use these 20 and we'll just put these over here. All right. So what have we done, by the way? So we built a bunch of lineups, but there very well could be like dupes among them. So we have to kind of filter those out. So let's let's use our handy dandy 
dupe finder tool, which we created. Where is that? Where is that effer? Now again, we could use the, the favorite section to, to filter this stuff out, but but this that's no fun. Let's use our thing. So dupe test v3. And again, this is available on TrueDFS for anybody that, that, that or actually I could send this to you via Discord, I think. Make sure you use, make sure you uh make sure you um join the Discord. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna paste all the lineups that we created into here, and it's gonna remove the dupes for us. So we gotta just go straight back. We're gonna go to the, the download folder and pick up all of these all these bad boys. All right. So I did all these. Let's see what this one was. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so let's do this. This is the first one, I believe, which is the 50 sheets default ones, right? So control C. And then we're going to put them into here. That's the that's the first 50. Now we'll go back and we're going to do all these salary, all these salary guys. I think this is the, the Prohoshka 30. Yep. Oops. Here's the Prohoshka 30. Put those in. Just make sure we know where we are. Let's 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 get rid of all these months from right for a previous project. So we don't go to anything else. Now the two sets of chase ons, right? Okay, so chase on number one i think this was the one that left 1400 on the table if i'm not mistaken and then we'll do chase on number two i think was this one where we left 300 on the table but we used the sheets default settings to make sure that we got unique or attempting to get to me. Okay, then the two kind of like uh, stack ones, right? Where we have those those three key fights. And again, this is these are just ideas. You know, I might do. I'm probably going to change all of this <laughs> by the end of the day. But these are just ideas that you can use. And then Control V. And then the last one. Now, I'm curious how many actual lineups we get out of all this. I presume there's going to be some dupes, so we're going to have to kind of create some more. So I want you, guys, you guys should think about, just think about what I'm thinking about. What what more, what more lineups have gone underrepresented? Like, what more would I want? So let's, um. okay, so here's 150 lineups, okay? Let's see how many of those are showing up in, in, in multiple screens here. Let's see how many actual unique lineups we have. Let's take a look. So it looks as though, wow, only four lineups were duped. That's actually amazing. We did, wow, we did com completely different settings, right? And we ended up with 146 of 150 completely unique lineups. That's awesome. So I'm going to actually do that. I'm going to, for now, I'm going to fire that right in there. There's going to be some some extras, right? So we're going to put this in. We'll see. And then we will go into DraftKings. MMA, download. And again, all we're talking about is the 150 minutes. That's really it. So here we go. So let's uh, bang. And then these are just kind of extras that I had at the end. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save 
these top six as as dupes there so that I know which ones I have to change. So these guys over here, for example, like those are dupes, so I'm going to have to change. And then also, we'll put this one down here. And as you'll notice, I have not once checked to see how much I have of anybody, which is somewhat consider that stupid, but a and stupider things in my life. Uh, the process is good, right? So if the process is good, how could we be uh, upset with the results? Now, again, there's portfolio management issues that we run into by playing this way, but um, I do know that the 150 lineups I put in were one, reflective of my projections. Number two, designed and constructed with the idea of winning the whole cheese. Okay. So what else can I ask for? Well, I could ask for a little bit of luck. So I'm going to be requesting that right now from everybody. And uh, again, hopefully you guys learned something. Hope this wasn't too confusing or too simple. And that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.